Hey everyone, it's Wednesday, September, September, October 10th. I'm wearing my pink. I purposely put on pink today for, for the, the month of October. Look at me, I'm a month behind. It is October 10th. It's pre-K to mastery with EXP. I'm live with Hank Bernadotto, Kelly Duncan-Smith, and Tracy Gagne. Our Fab Four is ready to go. and We're going to stay on topic here. We've still got a lot to cover in open houses. And it was such a great response last week from the community that we want to continue to give some detail and help everybody with their open house process. So I'm going to lead it off here and go to Hammer and Hank Bernadotto about security, if I may, because that is obviously still a very topical issue and something that's consistent. Hank, could you elaborate a little bit? I know you had some things you wanted to mention about security. Yeah, thank you, Kevin. I, I appreciate uh, uh, being on here this morning. Hey, before we get started, though, if you don't mind, uh, Kevin, it is October and it is October 10th. Uh, but just kind of a quick shout out. We do live here in, in Florida and we do have Hurricane Michael that's ripping through the Gulf of Mexico and is expected to, uh, to hit the panhandle, uh, you know, roughly in the next four to five hours. So uh, thoughts and prayers for everyone that's up there. Uh, in the panhandle and, and dealing with that hurricane. And, and obviously we're going to be reaching out uh, after to see how we can be of, of help. But, uh, you know, that's something that we deal with here in, in the Southeast. And and uh, just want to keep that in mind today uh, as they go through that. So, um, but uh, yeah, to, to hop back into the security thing. Um, last week we had some really, really, really good discussion on security and uh, brought up. So I, I have some some points I want to make on security and also some some tips for that. And uh, Sandy Tharp was very, very gracious to uh, share with us her um, damsels in defense, which is great. And as soon as that second episode drops, we're going to have a link to Sandy's page on there so that, uh, you know, ladies and men can check it out and, and uh, see what may fit them for, for their life. So uh, really good. But uh, as far as the security goes, one of the things I wanted to mention is that I'm a big tech guy, so I'm a big app guy. And uh, anyone in here, does anyone watch Shark Tank at all? Anyone big <laughs> Shark Tank fans? Okay, so I'm seeing some hands raised, so that's, that's cool. Uh, on Shark Tank, I don't know if you remember this, a couple of years ago, maybe about two, three years ago now, uh, there was actually an investor, and what they did is they brought in a llama into Shark Tank. So it was a pretty crazy episode. Uh, but my point is, is that they actually invented an app called Guard Llama. So that's G-U-A-R-D-L-L-A-M-A. -L -L -A -A. And uh, as soon as this uh, video uh, gets done recording and we drop it into our various platforms, YouTube, uh, Facebook, Instagram, so on and so forth, I'll put the link to Guard Llama. And I just want to speak a little bit about it because it's really cool. Um, in the sense that you actually get like a little fob, a little, uh, and I don't have an example, but almost like your key fob for your uh, vehicle. It's about that size, a little bit smaller, and you can put it in your pocket, you can put it anywhere, you can kind of conceal it. And what it does is if you double tap the button, it'll activate the app on your phone. No matter, uh, you know, if you're still in the home, your phone's in the home. I think it works up to like three to 400 feet, maybe even farther now. But if you double tap that button, just kind of inconspicuously in your pocket, it'll activate the app. And within 30 seconds, it'll send your GPS location with all of your statistics that you've uploaded in the app to your local uh, police department. Wow. So, and then, you know, it'll immediately send out a, uh, a car to you. Um, and this all happens within 30 seconds. It's a great app. And the reason I bring it up is because, again, the security that we talked about last week. Uh, but the other thing is that uh, with this app, NAR, the National Association of Realtors, have actually gotten behind this app. And if you are a realtor, you actually get a discount on the monthly service. And it's pretty affordable. I want to say um, the going retail is about $18 to $20 per month, but being a NAR, National Association of Realtors member, you, we get it for, I think, $11 or $12 a month. And uh, I believe all the hardware and everything is included in that. And folks, I'm telling you what, it is phenomenal. And, and I'm going to be encouraging my team to get it for open houses. Because again, like, like we had hinted last week uh, in terms of um, uh, who on there uh, you know, felt, you know, a little insecure at open houses that for this app, 
you know, you get it, you use it, and you can feel more safe in there. So I just really wanted to put that in there um, so that everyone could be aware of it and use it. And again, I'll drop the link in there um, when our video drops. And I think it's a great app for everyone uh, to check out um, on that. So I just wanted to put that out there for the security issue when we were talking about uh, open houses last week. So That's guard llama. Yeah, no, guard llama. So we want to make sure we explore that and, and certainly check in with Hank if you've got some extra you know, thoughts about that and other apps that might be helpful. Security is obviously the utmost importance. As we switch a little bit gears here, we, we did have you know, a lot of helpful hints on marketing last week, but one of the things that I, I'd like to go to Tracy about, the professionalism and the standards of marketing are always something that is part of the best practices and integrity of a real estate agent and certainly open houses. So Tracy, if you wouldn't mind just kind of giving us a little bit of thought around that as far as what you practice and what you feel should be certain things real estate agents should do on the professionalism and standards of marketing when doing an open house. Well, one of the things, when we're on our listing appointments, being a list agent, one of my biggest items of value is the marketing that we bring and how we actually present it to the marketplace. I think that a lot of agents do the three P's that we're all aware of. They put it on the MLS, they <clears throat> put a sign on the ground and they pray somebody else is going to sell it. And we have to up the game in the industry as a whole, because that those days are gone. We just can't do that. And in order to bring that industry standard to another level, we have to take a look at what we're actually presenting and what we're giving to our clients. So what we do is, you know, a lot of times you'll go to an open house or you'll, you'll see an agent and they'll hand out the MLS sheet. And that's just, you know, there's no effort involved behind that. That's just a print and click, right? So bring your, bring your sellers a marketing piece that is really going to highlight their property, actually take some time and create a flyer that has colors on it, that has information on it. And that actually gives them something to put on their countertop that looks pretty. You know, we're putting a complete package together. You want that package to be all inclusive and you want your marketing to be consistent. So giving them things to put on their countertop or to hand out at the open houses that are pretty and are going to help your agent who's hosting that open house engage with the people. And it's also going to help brand you long. Ooh. One second. I think we have, she was just, you could see she was just about to say something really important. Oh, did she just get disconnected? Uh might have just gotten disconnected, but you, you guys obviously heard about how we're, we're going about things. The, the professionals- hey, hey, actually, Kevin, can I hop in there? Yes, I was- So until we, until we get Tracy back, uh, yeah. let me hop in there. So um, what she was talking about uh, big on that was the flyers. And, and for the flyers, um, for the agents here in Southwest Florida, and I don't know if you have this up north at all, Kelly, you're going to have to um, you know, see if you do or not, but down here, what we have, and this is provided free by our local association, a local board is called agent 3000. Okay. And that agent 3000 is phenomenal. And there's so much that you can do, but for, especially for like a newer agent, um, you can go on agent 3000. You can actually click on the left hand side into marketing materials. And in there, they have an open house flyer. And all you do is seriously, it probably takes me about 45 seconds to create one of these flyers. Um, but all that you do for it is you put in the MLS number and then it populate everything and then you can manipulate it. So if, if it accidentally says three bedrooms, it's really four, you can put four in there. You can change the description up and then you can pick the pictures that you want to go on the flyer. And honestly, you can do it in less than three minutes easily down here. And then here's what you can do that makes it absolutely phenomenal. You can actually take that and print it as a PDF so that you can take it to your open house like what Tracy was talking about. But you can also post it instantly on Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, right from there. And it'll put it right up there so that when you put it on there, then you can have some advertising for that flyer. Now you got a beautifully created uh, uh, advertisement that you can put on every single um, platform that you have, social media platform, without having to go to that platform, then upload the flyer, and then it kind of comes in a little wonky. This already does it for you. And again, folks, how much did I say it was? Free. Yeah, very nice. Freebie. Free. 
So that's Agent 3000 down here in, in Florida. And I don't know, Kelly, do you have anything like that that your boards kind of provide for, for easy We do work? not. You do not? No, we do uh, not. There's nothing like that up in our area. But that doesn't mean that we can't get something like that up in our area. Agent 3000, a new market in Western Mass. Wonderful. You know, Kelly, I know Tracy will get back on with us. We, you know, and Hank, that's a great heads up, you know, as far as what people should be doing and, 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 and really creating a, a good standard for marketing. Kelly, you talked a lot about this last week, and, and I would just like to go to you to see if you'd like to add anything that we maybe didn't cover last week in terms of the professionalism and standards of marketing that you've uncovered as you've gone through this and been very successful with it. Um, yeah, there's a couple things I'd like to, to mention here. Um, one is we do a lot with Facebook boosts um, and conversion type of things. So what's beautiful about the Facebook boosts is you can go in and you pick demographically financially, you get to pick your marketplace. Say, I want to spend $50 advertising this open house. This is a four bedroom house with three and a half baths on an acre and a half with an in-ground pool. Well, I'm not going to market that to a 60 year old. They're not buying it. A 50 year old's not buying that house. That's a house where I can go in and I can say, okay, the price point is 400,000 on this house or, you know, four to 500,000. So I can go in and I can selectively pick people that make on average 100,000 or more a year. So I know that they qualify. I can pick demographically and price and, and age between say 28 and 40, because that's who's going to be buying that house. Those, the people that have young families. And so it's, um, it, that's a really amazing tool is the um, Facebook post. We get a ton of activity out of that. And then it also has a capture feature so we can follow up with the folks as well. Wonderful. That is a great, great point. Go ahead, Ed. Kevin, I want to piggyback on that, Kelly. So I, I will actually give a testimonial to this, folks. Um, and for those who don't think that hashtags work, you're absolutely wrong. So from Google, actually what um, Google does is they take hashtags and they take it from different platforms, whether it be Facebook or Instagram or LinkedIn, and they're using those hashtags as keywords. So just a quick testimonial, I had an open house here in Cape Coral, Florida, and um, I did a boosted post at 9 a.m. I did it on my business page, and I hashtagged Cape Coral, I hashtagged open houses, I hashtagged all this stuff. Well, I had a couple come through, and every single time you have uh, anyone come through your open house, please, please, please ask them, how did you hear about this open house? Did you follow the signs? Did you Google it? Did you see it on Zillow? Did you see it on realtor.com? How did you find out? So I, would, I asked this couple and I said, hey, how'd you find out? They said, oh, well, actually we were on Google and we just put in Cape Coral open houses today. And one of the first things that came up was my boosted sponsored ad for my open house that I had posted four hours sooner. So when I boosted that and I did the hashtags, Google actually turned that into new relevant content. They clicked on my, uh, uh, my business page, saw the home that I was doing the open house and showed up. Now, <laughs> wow, great if they would have bought the home, they didn't end up buying the <laughs> home, but I'm telling you folks, it works. And all I did, I did that for 10 bucks, $10. I got a couple to come in the home. I mean, that $10 risk could have turned into a $6,000 commission, you know? So at the end of the day, Kelly, that's a great point on the boosted post and you don't have to spend that much. And uh, folks, make sure your hashtags are correct. Make sure you have a good looking flyer, good content for that. Um, it really works. Um, and I think Tracy is back on uh, with video. Wonderful. <laughs> Wonderful. Tracy, we have you. You guys are the ones with the bad weather and I'm the one with the bad internet connection. I don't know. <laughs> Okay. It does not make sense to me. They can put men on the moon, but we can't have good internet service in Western Massachusetts. <laughs> Grace, let me ask you something. So we kind of covered uh, professionalism and standards of marketing, kind of adhering to our timeline. Yeah. Would you like to possibly delve into a little bit about, and I know Kelly's really going to have a position of strength here too, but I, I think you guys share this. Scripting and rapport building. You know, if we're thinking about this in terms of how it centers around open houses, and complements the whole real estate process. Tracy, would you like to lead that off for us and just kind of give us some of the things that you work on that you feel is best practices with regards to scripting and rapport building? Yeah, just like we talked about last week with the Ford model, family, occupation, recreation, and dreams, right? 
Um, if we're at a two or three bedroom home, you simply ask them if the bedrooms will accommodate their family size. So that way you're not asking them if they have kids, you're asking them about their family. And then they start to open up and the walls start coming down. If they're looking at a smaller house, you can ask them if they're looking at houses or condos. So that way they're, a lot, they're enabled to elaborate on that as well. If you have a big backyard, say, you know, ask them if they're gonna, if their dogs will enjoy or if their animals will enjoy running around the backyard or if they're gonna plan on putting a swing set there for the kids. You talk about what their life looks like and not necessarily the house, but just their life in general. And it helps them to, to bring down the walls. You're showing a genuine interest in them and what they're truly going to feel is the best fit for their family. So I think that, you know, making sure that we, we really just stay in the position of curiosity, um, it helps them feel like we truly are there to help. And, and that's really what we're truly there to do. Yes, the help factor is certainly evident, and that's that's the big thing about you know when you're trying to build that trust. You know, Kelly, we talk about trust all the time, you know, amongst ourselves, and certainly what the, the, the biggest thing in terms of business is the integrity and the trust, right? If you can trust somebody, there's just such a genuine communication between the two, and it's seamless. So if you if you'd like to a little bit uh, add a little further about what you've seen and how you've developed that trust amongst your clients and just in your business in general, that would be, I'm sure, helpful to the millions of fans that are out there for Kelly Duncan Smith. <laughs> so I, have, I go back to the old saying that people don't know how much you care, don't care how much you know until you know how much you care. So <laughs> you, can, you can be a wealth of knowledge, but if you're throwing up on people, they're going to run for the hills. Mm -hmm. So as Tracy said, you have to express interest in what does it look like to them? Let them know that you're coming from contribution, that you know, you're know you there to help them. And like I have right now personally, uh, probably over 50 keys to houses in, in my house. They're <laughs> locked up, they're in a safe, but if somebody locks themselves out of their house, they call me. So there's trust built. When you are in a small town, like I'm in a small town in Massachusetts and it's, you know, you get a good or a bad reputation really quickly. So mm -hmm. you better do as you say and say as you do, mm -hmm. come through, show up on time, be responsible, re be respectful. But this isn't about you. This is about them and never, ever forget that. It's a great point, right? Treat people the way you want to be treated is the golden rule. And that, that applies certainly to open houses. That applies to everything that we're doing in our business and our day-to-day -day operations. You know, and I think that's that's generally what this panel uh, prescribes to. It's 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 not a short race. It's a long term thought process here. So you look yourself in the mirror and you say, how would I want to carry myself and how would I want to see others treat me? And I think that applies certainly in this process with open houses. So we've covered security. We've covered apps. We've got a hand up from the panel. We've covered professionals and standards. We've covered scripting and rapport building. And we have one minute and 53 seconds for Hank and Tracy and Kelly to finish up. So I'm going to go to Hank first, then we're going to go to Kelly, and then we're going to have Tracy, and then we're going to go to Q&A. Go ahead, Hank. Is this our 10-minute warning, or what are we at? This is our <laughs> one minute and 52-second warning before we go to Q&A. We're very oh, much- Before we go to Q&A. Okay, good. So we've still got time for Q&A. Awesome. Uh, actually, I just want to piggyback on what uh, Tracy and Kelly uh, said. And folks, I actually put this into my teachings. Um, and really with this, what they said is going three levels deep. And I don't know if anyone's ever heard that before, but this is what I practice. And what I mean by that is if someone says, Hey Hank, um, I want a big backyard. Okay. I can't what assume that? that I know what a big backyard looks like to them. What if they're coming from the 33rd floor in Manhattan, Kevin Debs? Okay. <laughs> A big backyard to them may be a little 10 foot by 10 foot grass patch and that's a big backyard to them. So you can't assume. So go three levels deep. And what I mean by that is ask the question. And then when they say, well, it looks like, you know, whatever it is, ask another question and another question until you finally get down three levels deep to what they're really saying. Don't assume you know what a big backyard looks like. Okay. So go that extra level. And that's what I equate, and I call it going three levels deep.
Okay. Go three levels deep in that questioning. So I'll just add that on to what they both said. And um, that's just the terminology I use for it. So it's an excellent point, right? You always want to ask the extra question because you know, you just, if you don't know the answer, it's always, and there's no dumb question, certainly in, in what we're yeah. doing. Today. Awesome. Kelly, I saw a hand go up. Would you like to add to that, uh, to what we of discussed? Course. Of course. Um, so one of the things I wanted to mention, because we're talking about open houses, is I know we, we touched on it before, but go, the door knocking beforehand and going with coming from contribution. I want to help your neighbors sell their house. I just listed their home. What is it about this neighborhood that you love? What's the best part about living here? If you could change one thing, what would it be? Invite the neighbors to the open house and then follow up. After you sell the open house, go back to those people and say, hey, thank you so much for being part of that. You helped me sell that house because I would not have known that you did a 4th of July picnic every year and all the kids graduation, you know, they have graduation parties for all of the kids at the first week of June. I wouldn't have known those things without your contribution. I've really grown to love this neighborhood and I know I could sell homes in this neighborhood. So if you're looking to sell or you know anybody else that's looking to sell, please think of me. You showed genuine concern and interest. And if, when you do that with the before and the after, you're not only introducing yourself to the entire sphere of the neighborhood um, and building a rapport with them, but they will help you sell that house. It's, it's a great point. And you know, the follow-up is something that will be a consistent theme for amongst all the panelists. It's what they do and that's how they, they become successful. They definitely follow up in such a genuine way. And I think that's very important. Tracy, I'm going to go right to Q&A, if you're okay with that. I'm going to see if our esteemed group of double-digit participants has anything that they would like to ask about what we talked about or introduce something that they've done in their open house process that could really be beneficial for everybody to hear and certainly uh, branding with them with open houses in residential real estate. So I'll open it up to the floor. Is there anybody who has a question or a topic they'd like to discuss? And or I just, an idea they'd like to share. Yeah, I just unmuted everybody, by the way. So go ahead. Um, is there anybody that Don't has be a shy. question or a comment? We have some lovely parting gifts. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It sounds like we're in listen-only mode. You know what? I would go back to Tracy because I know, Tracy, we had that great snapshot uh, of you, and we were in the middle of professionalism and standards and marketing. Was there anything that we left out that you'd like to just touch on before we get to some announcements and kind of wrap things up on, on a beautiful Wednesday? Just take the time with your clients and make sure that you're representing them to your highest ability. Take some time to learn about marketing techniques and programs that are out there that can help you have a better business. That's my biggest suggestion on that is, is you deserve to do that for yourself and for your clients. Taking the time, it's, yeah, being thoughtful is really all about what we're, we're trying to accomplish here, right? Because that, that does go into the trust and, and the rapport that you have. So that's, that's a great point. We have so many tools available to us in this industry, and it can be a little overwhelming, but if you take time to sort through them, you'll find the things that work for you, and that'll help benefit your business and your clients will have a better experience for it. Yep, I think that's right. So, well, now that I'm in the right month, yes, was that Tracy? Tracy. Yeah. That was me. I was saying, oh, make yeah. your note. When a couple leaves and they've just told you that they have three kids and that their dog spot and their, you know, make your notes. So when you follow up with them, you have your cheat sheet to remember um, because you're not going to remember every single conversation and everybody's name and everybody's dog's name. But if you make your notes and then you can follow up properly. Um, it's just important when they, as they leave the open house, jot down everything that you can remember about them so that you can have um, co conversations with substance. That makes sense. Can substance. I add to that? You may. That's also very important to give feedback to your sellers because yes. your sellers want to know who's been in your house, what kind yeah. of families there, you know, they have an emotional attachment to that property. They want an idea of who's looking at it, who's there, you know, it's, is it a family with kids? Is it an older, you know, they want to know who's in the house. They want to know what their thoughts are. They want to know why that house is going to be good for them. And it's important for that kind of follow-up for your sellers too. You can't just say we had eight people through, they don't understand that. So giving them right. more information that they can process is going to, really help them be engaged 
with the, the rest of the process, like when they get the offers in. It'll help them stay engaged with that. And it really shows that you did your job. You found yeah. out about the people buying their house. They, every seller wants to know about the people buying their house. And that open house is not over until you have gotten back to those that seller. 100%. That's and if you're hosting an open house for another agent, please, please, please let that agent know the feedback as soon as that open house is over and don't make them chase you. That's a very good point. You guys, I mean, you think about it, like sometimes when we get our commissions, it's certainly something we've earned. But I think from the seller standpoint or anybody who's paying that commission would look at it like, what did they do over the course of time to lead up to that commission? Yeah. So all these elements that you guys have brought up today certainly enforce that that's what is the responsibility of an agent. That's the responsibility. If you take uh, pride in your work, you want that seller or buyer walking away. Why? Because if then it's referral opportunity, they have a good feeling about it. And they say, you know, that's who I want to do business with going forward. If there's ever another transaction or if their friends or family or people they care about come in contact on a real estate transaction, they want to be able to recommend a Kelly Duncan Smith, a Tracy Gagne, a Hank Bird, a Dada. So I think that wraps up some of the things that we want to discuss today. But I know that we have some exciting things coming up now that I'm in the right month, right? My, my <laughs> pink should tell everyone that I'm, in the right month. I'm back. I'm back here. We've got a, a very exciting, leading up to it, there's going to be a very fun week of meetings and strategic uh, sort of, uh, I guess, performances by some of the people that we are really comfortable with in real estate down here in Southwest Florida and across to the Eastern part of Florida. So we welcome all of our brethren from other states that first week of December, but it leads up to Friday, December 7th. That is gonna be the NET conference. That is networking, education, and technology that we've done. It's our third one this year. It's going to be at the Fort Myers Crown Plaza. There'll be far more details to come in each of our ensuing broadcasts. But I just would like to give Hank a minute or two. Hank does an excellent job organizing, presenting, branding this, along with myself and Dave Nitsche. And we have a host of other people now as our team continues to grow and our community grows. We are just so excited about what's going to happen here in December. So Hank, go ahead without further ado, and I'll just give you a timer. If you want to be at 29 minutes, you got a minute 56. You can okay, do it. Perfect. Well, thank you. Uh, yeah, so the NET, again, stands for Networking Education Technology. It'll be our third one. Our first one was in February. We had 111 attendees. Uh, second one was in June. We had 101 attendees. And we're looking to blow this up in between 150 and 250 attendees uh, for this uh, December 7th. Uh, here in Southwest Florida, Fort Myers, Florida is a great event. We're bringing in national speakers to come in because uh, the biggest thing is, folks, that agents crave education. They really do. They want to be educated. So, um, and this is not uh, just an EXP thing, folks. This isn't everything. We've had agents from all different uh, brokerages come in and not only speak, but uh, attend. So we absolutely love this format. It's great. It's duplicatable. It's replicatable anywhere. Uh, but it really allows the agents to come in, to network, get a great day of education. We feed you. Yes, you get a free lunch in there. You get some breakfast, get some coffee um, <laughs> in you. And then we show you a lot of technology, how the, the um, industry is changing, what apps to use, so on and so forth. So it's a great day. Um, and uh, that's pretty much all I got about it. It's, it's, look out for it, folks. You do not want to miss it. We give so many freebies away as well. We give books away. We <laughs> give... Uh, you know, uh, there's going to be some night stay to give away. So there's going to be a lot of stuff. A lot of great things that day and, and certainly in the week leading up. And so I would, I would say as we close, I want to thank our panelists, Kelly Duncan Smith, Tracy Gagney, Hank Bertadotto, known as Hammer and Hank here in the Southwest Florida region. We want to Woo! think about all of our uh, members that are going to be affected by Hurricane Michael. Please do not hesitate to seek shelter and safety. Uh, our, our, our sisters up in Western Mass have opened up, talk about an open house, they've opened up to the entire team. Anybody on this call wants to stay in Western Mass? Did I speak out of turn, Kelly and Tracy? Oh, come okay. on, we have plenty of room. I just wanted to make sure I had that right. You guys enjoy your Wednesday. Hit it hard. We're going to be back next Wednesday, and we'll give you the topics. We're probably going to go ahead and switch to something. We're going to keep that a surprise until we get to it. We'll see you on the 17th. Have a great day, everybody. Have a great weekend. Thank you. Bye. Thank bye you. Bye. bye. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys.